Hello and welcome to the special transmission on uh, PTI government's uh, three years, uh, three uh, successful years in government. Uh, today we are actually taking stock of uh, uh, what the government has done, what it had promised and how it is uh, promising to deliver in coming two years. Uh, remember, yesterday also I actually pointed out that uh, um, uh, this is the first political party, first uh, government that actually promised that uh, um, and asked media to uh, uh, actually keep a check on its promises. Usually, otherwise, the past parties have not been able uh, to actually remember their manifestos only one or two years down the lane when they were in government. Uh, but this government actually asked people to keep on uh, holding it accountable, then I just reported yesterday as well that uh, uh, Dawn group of publications, umpteen others, actually ran trackers on the promises that were made in manifesto. And um, uh, very interestingly, while it was pointed out that in these three years, uh, uh, two promises were totally fulfilled, but 36 were the promises that had been, uh, implementation on those promises had been started. And there were only six where um, any progress was still awaited. That is not all. The government of Pakistan has actually released a comprehensive three-year uh, all-round um, uh, uh, assessment of what it has been doing. One aspect that is very important is uh, uh, poverty alleviation. And we have seen incredible strides in the SAS program. We are going to talk about these things and more. We are going to talk about the economic angle. We are going to talk about the political angle. And we especially are going to look at all these things uh, in view of the COVID uh, pandemic. Prime Minister of Pakistan today spoke uh, to uh, an audience uh, in Islamabad. And there he actually pointed out that Pakistan was being praised for A, its uh, COVID response, B, how effectively it actually intervened and provided people with the social, uh, you know, breathing space, economic breathing space. And then he also pointed out that the government is committed to all its missions. We are going to talk about all these matters. And in order to help us understand these issues, uh, we are joined by an eminent panel. Uh, and um, although we are going to show you a report uh, later in the program as well, but before that, let me introduce the uh, guest in the studio. I have with me on Abbas uh, Bappi Saab, who is a senator of uh, Pakistan, Tehri Gensav, the ruling party. Thank you very much, sir, for Thank being you. part of the program. Next to him is Shakil Ahmed Rami Saab. He is uh, a vegetable expert on all economic matters, especially these days he focuses a lot on CPAC, and has become an authority on that too. Uh, but today he is here as uh, an economic analyst. Thank you very much sir, for being part of the program as well. We will be, uh, I'm not sure that the third guest has joined us. Uh, right, uh, Dr. Rana Jawad Askar uh, is an expert on uh, uh, you know, uh, various issues regarding COVID. He joins us, he is a medical doctor, medical practitioner. Dr. Saab, thank you very much sir for being part of the program as well. Let me start with uh, Senator uh, On Abbas. Uh, sir, what are the nodal points that uh, your uh, government is really proud of? And you can actually talk about them. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, I, first of all, I personally believe that the, today's address of the Prime Minister was not an address of a Prime Minister of a country. It was more of a leadership uh, uh, sort of uh, straight, which probably the nation was listening to in a way that reminded me of the days when we were having those, uh, you know, election campaign in those days. Mm -hmm. So has keeping his promises true to the nation was something you know we were really looking after. Mm -hmm. So completing the three years and uh, talking to the nation in a way which he spoke today for one and a half or two hours today, mm -hmm. really, you know, it gave me goosebumps to myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, uh, Alhamdulillah, I was thanking God for it, that we got this opportunity to serve our nation. Mm -hmm. So the main points that we were listening to, to, which I understood from the address of the Prime Minister today. If we start one by one, uh, first was the promise of a social welfare state. Yeah. See, this is where we had the promise with the nation that will mm -hmm. take our country to the level where the, all the developed countries are right now. So uh, he spoke about the health cards, you know, mm -hmm. one of the gate points we had, uh, yeah. health card for KPK. 40 million people of the KPK are having health cards with a facility of 1 million rupees. Right. Uh, we have started this health card in Punjab in uh, Dera Ghazi Khan, Dewey 
Ramin and Sahiwal Devian. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things uh, mm -hmm. he spoke about. The next thing which he talked about was the Esas emergency cash, as yeah. he spoke, that when the whole of the world, the globe was, uh, you know, uh, facing this pandemic, Pakistan being the developing country still stood up to this pandemic mm -hmm. and helped his people with 144 billion rupees to around 12 million people, 120, 120 million people right. with 12,000 rupees. Yeah. That was really something very remarkable and we should be boasting about right. it. Right. Moving on to was the agriculture part, which I Kisanka. think is the second most important part. This year we saw increase in the production of the four major crops, right. uh, naming wheat, maize, mm -hmm. rice and sugarcane, mm -hmm. 8 to 12 percent on most of the major right. crops. And the best part was the support, price support system, which mm -hmm. this government provided. I mean, just talk about the wheat. Raising the price from 1400 rupees per month to 1800 rupees per month was one of the pinnacles of this film. Right. And with having 27 million tons of wheat this year, having we felt that at least 1100 billion rupees in all the four crops right. went to extra, went to the agriculturist, right. which really boosted the purchasing power of the agriculturist, which right. makes almost 60% right. of the employment I'm, of the I'm glad that you have actually pointed yeah. out about agriculture. There are two promises that still we are awaiting, right? One about <coughs> the middleman and yeah. how he keeps on actually making profit out of everything. I understand Kisan card is important, yeah. but still a lot needs to be done. The second thing is, while there were <coughs> bumper cr crops, Pakistan still has to import. Yeah. Why? Yeah. See, remember that Pakistan is an economy who is stuck with the mafias and yeah. there's a mafia everywhere. Yeah. Middlemen is one of those mafias you're talking about. We have sugar mafias, we have oil mafias mm -hmm. and we have middlemen too. Getting rid of it, it's not an easy task. So what we did, we have we are going to build some strategic reserves. Now this year we have 27 million tons, which is exactly what we need in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Government is holding in Punjab 4 million tons of wheat right now, right. and people have enough food to cover for this whole year. But we thought in October, when there will be a pressure on the wheat stocks, mm -hmm. government should be having another strategic reserves of 2 million tons. Okay. So the, the middleman who is holding right now, mm -hmm. we estimate around 1 to 1.2 million tons mm -hmm. are being hoarded by middlemen, okay. he won't be able to inflate the price. Okay. So keep the checks on the middlemen, we're right. going to build up those strategic reserves, number right. one. Number two, we wanted to have a system where actually middlemen don't have the system. So we're going to build the silos, mm -hmm. you know, those storages, 900 storages being built almost in the process being built in right. Punjab right now, right. where we'll be keeping all the major agriculture crops so the middleman does not roll and holds his crops. Right. And apart from that, Agriculture Bank, Prime Minister has pushed Agriculture Bank to the limits to start giving loans to the people who do not own the large chunks of land. Right. So when they have enough money, they can store their own crop and sell it at the time when they want to sell it, rather sell it to the middleman right. who actually has the finance to pick it up at the time when he reads the money and then just stores it and keeps it for the price to go up. So right. this is a very large process and right. reforms do not really occur overnight. Overnight, well. um, yeah. although in three years you have actually made a lot of strides, but uh, right now you have given me a lot to actually go on. Uh, let me go to Shakil Rame sahab. Shakil Rame sahab, uh, one aspect that we have been, you and I have been discussing in various programs is about data. <clears throat> uh, it seems that uh, in Pakistan data collection wa was a problem for 20 years. Uh, Pakistan didn't have a census, then we got a census, it became controversial. Now, thanks to the SAS program, uh, because of the poverty numbers, then also the Kisan card regarding agriculture sector and health card, medical sector as well, especially consumption and needs of people. The government seems to be actually creating a lot of data that might be useful in targeted interventions. What do you say on that? Look, uh, we on the poverty data, you are specifically talking about yeah. the, the concept of the ISAS. We have a lot of data in the form of NADRA. Okay. Because we are doing it for the so many years. Yeah. Where two or three decades, uh, we are implementing a NADRA project. NADRA, well, NADRA knows how much you make and how much you collect. And how much you everybody spend. goes there for the, you can say, for the ID card, national identity no, card. No, that is true. And but the answer is the location, right? So, Location, everything is there in the family tree. In the way, no, everything family is. tree might be there. But every uh, is the but the good point is that they have created data for the poverty and the SAS program. Yeah. That is a good strategy. But the thing is, how they will use that data? That mm -hmm. will be the real, uh, I think, uh, the real question we have to wait for. Okay. Right now, they are collecting the data. If they are just using like the data we have created uh, through the PBS or some other um, forums just to keep it with the government, or just to manipulate in the favor of the <coughs> government. 
Okay. So then we have to wait. So what would be the validity of that data? Uh, no, no, again, I, I have totally get your concern. And it has been a debate not only in Pakistan, all over the world, especially the developed world. But when you look at the ex execution of SAS emergency cash, when you look at targeted interventions right from your um, uh, right to various other interventions, there seems to be a very boisterous approach to actually uh, providing relief to the common man. No, you are right. They provided the relief. Yeah. But only just to say that they have the data, everything would be solved. Right. That would be another case. Right. There is an excellent execution of this uh, relief program during the COVID-19. There is no second thought. And that uh, distribution of uh, resources according to the need and to the poor created one a very good opportunity through the consumption mm -hmm. for the local market. Mm -hmm. That's why we have seen that our GDP growth was more than what we were expecting. Okay. Because we have given the money to the people and they create, contributed in the consumption. Right. Basically, Pakistan... Are you, are you saying that our growth is uh, driven by consumption only? Yes, it is consumption. If somebody <coughs> is saying like that, for example, with the very... Uh, with uh, uh, with apology, look, that we're talking about the increase in the production of crop. Yeah. But we're not telling this increase due to the increase in the production, uh, in the production area. It okay. is not due to productivity. One thing, second thing. No, no, the hang, crops, on, hang on. Yeah, is that a bad thing? Yes. Because you are not increasing it, it bad thing. Why? No, no. The no, first listen, part. Listen, is it listen. Bad? It is bad thing. Why? Because we have to decrease the uh, crop area for the cotton. And the production of cotton has decreased many okay. times, many fold. <coughs> okay. So because you are sacrificing one crop for another crop, <coughs> that means you are not making any progress. That's me. Then for the cotton, you have to export the cotton. Your okay. import bill have to started to rise. Even for the July. Our export, uh, import bill has been increased again. There right. are two reasons for that. That's why we are just showing like that crop production has been increased. But uh, we are not telling, we are it impacted the agriculture in other, other and, and we are going to talk about the current account deficit also. There are various other yeah, aspects. Yeah. But the key point was data and how it is used. Uh, would you agree with me in the past when the government of Pakistan did not know before the census how many are we? Uh, between the presidency and prime minister's office, two, uh, two crore would actually disappear, right? At that time, if government was uh, introducing any kind of relief, there was no, no data to comport to it. Now, the, now do There is no second opinion it? about the importance of data. Right. But we have to see how the, pl <coughs> the plans are executing. Okay. So how the government will execute the plans. So that right. we have to see what I'm saying. With your permission, let me bring in Dr. Rana Jabat Oskar Saab. Uh, Dr. Saab, at the start, I, when I was introducing you, I uh, pointed out that you are an expert on uh, medicine and COVID also. But you are also a prolific writer, and you can actually talk about broader aspects as well. So I'm not actually going to create silos uh, in which everyone speaks a different response, uh, response to various other things or different things. Let me ask you about certain aspects that were pointed out by a senator regarding Pakistan's healthcare sector. Uh, first, uh, respond to that. And then we are going to, of course, uh, talk about uh, how the government of Pakistan responded to COVID-19 as well. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting. Uh, and um, uh, yes, the broader healthcare reforms is also one of my favorite topic. And uh, I have written on it also. And the problems uh, are long seated and um, are difficult to uh, challenge. Um, and the, so when the new government came, uh, my hope, personal hope was uh, because the <clears throat> very soon the health sector was uh, led by a very well accomplished uh, public health professional. And now um, uh, the second minister who is uh, another infectious disease expert, Dr. Faisal Sultan. So yeah. I think my expectations were more, uh, and I wanted more on a preventive care uh, than the curative care. And if we look at our health budgets uh, successively over the years, uh, the majority of the chunk always goes to the salaries and then to the ho major hospitals or the clinical services. Uh, and we always then left with the very little amount for preventive services. And the country like Pakistan, uh, with a population of more than 200 million, uh, cannot afford to provide health care to all its citizens. Uh, you know, I know um, I'm well aware of the, you know, the, um, the health card and everything, which is, I think, an excellent step uh, to a good uh, cause and to help the right. poor. But 
the important point is that if we do not stop people getting sick, uh, no amount of resources in any country can afford to pay for the health uh, health services. And I think that's now after COVID-19, uh, that uh, lesson has been learned uh, across the governments. Uh, uh, not that much uh, what I want to see, but that's uh, one of the good steps, uh, I think, uh, where preventive care is getting right. its due importance. Um, uh, and now coming back to COVID-19, uh, uh, because I was also... With your permission, I have many questions for you. I'm uh, just told that we have to take a, a small break. When I come back, I'm going to, uh, uh, to come straight back to you, sir, and we are going to resume this discussion. We are take a break. When we come back, we are going to resume the discussion. Take a break. Welcome back. Uh, before going to the break, we were talking about government's performance. We are going to actually resume the discussion right from there. But before that, our team has uh, uh, prepared a package for you. Let us first watch it. As I told you earlier, let us watch it. And then we are going to resume the discussion. After the completion of three years in office, Prime Minister Imran Khan highlighted the key achievements of his government, including marking a journey of a stable economy and several other development and welfare projects at the Jinnah Convention Centre in Islamabad. The Ministry of Information and Broadcasting issued a 255-page three-years performance report, which gives valuable insight into the efforts of each ministry and division that are facilitating the common man to achieve the vision of Naya Pakistan. Besides defining the baseline of each sector, it also focused focused on the key objectives, initiatives, planning, strategies, legislative policy framework and the projects in the pipeline. The PTI-led government faced various inherited challenges, including financial stability, poverty, inappropriate education system and inadequate health facilities. However, during PTI's three years, the struggle to achieve set goals could be seen despite sustaining the COVID-19 pandemic through the smart lockdown strategy. Pakistan has recently been ranked by The Economist as the third best performing country for handling the pandemic. The administration of nearly 30 million vaccines across the country and self-sufficiency in manufacturing of personal protection equipment are also key achievements for the government. To uplift the living standard of the common man, the PTI-led government had launched projects like Naya Pakistan Housing Program for Affordable Accommodation to Low-Income Groups, a SARS Program for Social Security and the Kamyab Jawan Program for imparting skills to the youth which would help them get employment in the future. The report mentions the establishment of National Command and Operations Centre which has helped to formulate a coherent response against the novel coronavirus. The three-year performance report is available for public information at the the official website of Directorate of Electronic Media and Publication. Right, uh, you have seen the assessment of uh, what was said today. Uh, before I actually come back to the studio, I had told Dr. Rana Jawad Azhar that I am coming back to him. Uh, Dr. Saab, you were about to actually talk about the uh, COVID-19 situation. Before that, uh, you were also mentioning how much of our uh, budget actually goes to healthcare and there to salaries. Uh, can you actually point out that you are, when you are talking about that, you are talking about the uh, ratio of GDP or you are talking about merely the federal government's budget? Because if I understand correctly, it is primarily a provincial subject. Right, Dr. Sir? Yes. Uh, actually, what I was talking about was the overall our uh, health expenditure. Uh, it doesn't matter if it is at the uh, federal level or the provincial level the trend is the same and the you know the way the money is distributed is pretty much the same and also we uh, all of us know that majority of the uh, expense health related expense uh, was uh, out of pocket expenses which i think with this sehat card uh, you know our relief will be given to the people coming back to the covid 19 uh, situation uh, right now uh, though we are going through a very dangerous phase of uh, delta variant but i want to use this um, moment uh, because you are looking at the you know the past um, uh, you know highlights of the work so i think that what helped in pakistan was that we started very early on covid-19 i remember on 15th january we first had a discussion on covid-19 uh, for pakistan when it was only in three different uh, three countries outside china with very few cases uh, 
or related to travel. But we started working on it very early, and by 22nd of January, uh, we already had the core committee uh, for coronavirus uh, for Pakistan. And I was, uh, as a, I was part of it as an advisor on communicable diseases on that. And from right. that, uh, the good thing was that we were trying to shore up our defenses um, uh, all over Pakistan. Uh, not everything which was uh, required uh, was we were able to do it. But uh, by the 26th uh, February, when the first came to Pakistan, uh, we were already, um, if I don't say running, at least we were walking. Uh, so it was, um, you know, better managed than many other countries. The second right. point was that uh, today the prime minister also mentioned uh, the issue of uh, not going to a massive lo lockdown, which uh, many countries did. And this decision was very, um, uh, let's say, unpopular decision uh, from a technical point of view. And I remember we were just few of us uh, who actually did a math on that and come up with calculations which were against everyone else's calculations or projection models in which we were able to see that, yes, the disease is serious, but it's not going to be doomsday scenario for Pakistan. And we were also fully aware of the, um, you know, the daily plight of uh, our daily laborers uh, who yeah. buy the things in small sachets, uh, like yeah. uh, two toasts of double roti uh, or bread, uh, you could say. Uh, you know, not many people know that, uh, you know, uh, those big uh, brands uh, sell um, uh, in two toast uh, packings right. of those uh, same bread which you and I buy uh, from the markets. Uh, yeah. Not many people know uh, that, the, you know, the tea and the ghee and everything else, yeah. the local commodities are sold on such, in a sm uh, such a small sachet uh, right. by the same branded companies in the same packages which shows that the most people in our part of the world or in our country were buying right. it on a daily basis. So that was a very important point when uh, right. we made uh, a Dr. case. Sir, it is a very important point and um, uh, one has to actually compliment the government. At that time, many of us were not seeing that reality, but the prime minister always kept on looking at the most vulnerable in the economy compared to us with the exception of China uh, in our neighborhood, right from India to Afghanistan to Iran. It has been bedlam the way the economy and COVID were handled uh, during this time. But you want to actually respond to two critiques. Uh, one, he talked about how uh, the uh, you know agricultural uh, surplus might be increasing because of the land that is cultivated, not the yield. And then, of course, Dr. Saab also pointed out certain things about healthcare. I'll start with you complimenting the doctor. Yeah. And then I'll come to you. Please go ahead. Uh, as he rightly said, uh, you know, when the COVID came last year, it was such an easy decision for us, for people like us, to make, go for a lockdown. Yeah. And, you know, all the people, major uh, core committee in our party and the government, pressurized the prime minister to go for the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And he would have easily done it because, you know, people sitting in Islamabad who are getting their salaries like MNA, the senators or the bureaucrats, mm -hmm. they're not the ones who will be affected by the decisions. Right. But trust me, at that in time when prime minister decided, no, I will not go for a low lockdown, but I'll go for a smart lockdown mm -hmm. because he was thinking about the poor poverty and all those indicators <coughs> thought, you know, I may not uh, see the people's dying from the COVID, but I might see people losing their livelihoods. Mm -hmm. So he took a decision, which today we can really boast about it. We have been rated as number third in the world mm -hmm. with an, a number of 84.4% mm -hmm. out of 100 after New Zealand and Hong Kong, who had fought well with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And today we can also boast about that 50 million jabs have been, vac all people have been vaccinated mm -hmm. in Pakistan, first and the second jabs both. And we have enough stocks of 78 million lying in Pakistan okay. to, to make 50% you know, uh, of the population to vaccinate that. So Alhamdulillah, we're on a very right track and it's entirely because of Allah and mm -hmm. then the Prime Minister's vision that mm -hmm. we are staying today. Now the second point which the Honourable colleague said. Yeah, actually he also pointed out about how our healthcare sector is organised yeah. and how most of the healthcare yeah. uh, budget actually goes to salaries yeah. rather than capacity See, building. This is, this, is the, this is something we really inherited. Uh, yeah. We're trying to rectify it but health cards probably is one of the things we think can give us breathing space to yeah. the public sector okay. because it emphasises more on the private sector. Right. Health card gives you 1 million cash 
you can spend on your treatment in a public in a private sector hospital mm -hmm. so we're building a private sector hospital whilst you know trying to manage the sustainable the public sector hospital too mm -hmm. so that we cannot really get away with this thing mm -hmm. but building that private sector may try to help that pressure uh, on yeah. the public sector hospitals and too. that was the core point because uh, health card actually can take care of people's finances yeah. But in order to uh, for them to get good uh, good health care, they have to have hospitals. Yes, it might be in the urban centers, yeah. but in the rural centers, there is always dearth of uh, health care, especially the hospital, not only public, private also. Yes, Pitavi, so that's what I'm trying to say. No? Yeah. Health card most works for the private sector hospitals. You know, yeah, you can use hospital has to be there. Yeah, see, so when the health card comes, people will start building the hospitals too. It's like a system, a chicken and egg sort of system over there. So if the health card is there, people will start building hospitals. Now, I know at least three hospitals, Ahmed Pushar mm -hmm. in Bahalpur, they said we want to get enlisted on health card, so they started building the system according to the health card system. Mm. You know, the laboratories, they want to have it, they want to have analytical, they want to have pharmacists. You know, so all those skills which are required to be on the health card, mm. once the private sector hospital, they, they'll just build it up. That's where the chicken egg situation is coming right. up, number one. Number two, as the uh, honorable gentleman said, yes, we believe the cotton land, the cultivation for cotton has been going down. This is not because we asked for it, because people thought it is not profitable. Okay. Remember that. In agriculture, it's not the government who decides who goes for it. Mm -hmm. So I agree what he said, that probably the production of the major crops mm -hmm. went up because of the cotton going down, but that's not entirely because of it. There were other issues as well. Mm -hmm. uh, shortage of water in the Bahawalagar division was one of the issues we faced. Uh, the rate prices of the cotton going down was another issue. But this year, from 6 million bales of cotton bales, which were produced in 2021, mm -hmm. we're forcing another 10 million bales, total 10 million bales in 22, but will not affect the major production of other four crops as well. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. That is because the price, the farmer is getting a good price. So if he gets the 1,800 rupees for wheat, he'll, he'll, he'll go for the wheat. Sure. If he gets 1,600 rupees plus minus mm -hmm. on the rice, he'll go for it. He'll yeah. get 300 of sugar cane. He'll get 13 from maize that is a push which a farmer needs to go and cultivate that crop so right. that's where the government comes in and uh, very quickly yeah. because so far you were responding to them yeah. can you also reflect on the education sector yes we have built mm. around uh, 80 more colleges in Punjab. As you know, after the 18th Amendment, most yeah. of the education goes in. But the major thing the federal government has done is the one unanimous curriculum for all the Pakistan. Mm -hmm. You remember Pakistan, the Prime Minister has been saying this thing. I want only one Pakistan for everybody. You can't have a rich people going to English medium schools mm -hmm. and the poor going to Urdu medium schools. And when they all go for a job, there is a huge difference in interview. Because right. I speak English, I'll get the job. And you may not speak English, you won't get a job. That's where the difference lies. He wanted actually the same unanimous curriculum yeah. everyone so up till primary we have the same curriculum for everyone regardless of uh, poor and rich regardless of private and public sector schools that is one of the thing we can boast about number one mm. number two building more colleges in Punjab they have upgraded 900 more colleges in Punjab okay. which is a very good thing good uh, we have given SR scholarship last year 50,000 scholarship has been given to the undergrads not to the masters and MS in MPhils mm. 50,000 this year we are we're bound to cross 100,000 more scholarships right. so small petty things but when it all piles up probably it'll have a good education reforms and inshallah the vision which Prime Minister Force is right. will be completed in this The way. issue of uh, school dropouts is quite serious, right? Yeah. So perhaps uh, uh, focusing on the primary le level education is also very important. But let me go back to Shaquille Rame Sir, so, uh, you have listened to the uh, responses and of course there is an element of education. Pakistan is seeing a lot of opportunities in the region right from CPAC to Afghanistan and elsewhere. But usually when you talk about our workforce, we are not that kind of trained. Uh, perhaps that there is a dearth of knowledge or experience as well. Do you think that the government's uh, focus on uh, academic uh, you know, solutions will be enough or there is need for more? Look, for the skill development, we need more. Okay. Even for the education, first of all, we have to train the teachers. Okay. Right now, what we are having, the quality of teachers yeah. at all levels. Mm -hmm. Not only for the schools, even mm -hmm. for the university level. Yeah. What we are giving them, just to asking them to, in the university, just asking them students to produce the thesis on the basis of secondary data mm -hmm. or on the basis of the secondary research. Right. We are not infusing no, at no, any on, time. No, there, there is an elite bias. You always go up. I want no, to come I, down. I, I'm coming down also. University is okay. You can uh, fix them later. But at this moment, That's, the issue I'm is primary back. level and uh, technical. If you allow me, 
I can do it. But I have to actually help you. If you don't allow me, I cannot. No, no, but I'll have so, to request you to focus look, on these issues. In a, because we have to work in a comprehensive way. Immediate solution will come you are from the higher education. Yeah. Long term solution will come from if you start with the primary education. Okay. From the primary education, what we are doing, because we, we are not uh, teaching the skills. Mm -hmm. We are just giving them few lessons. It, this is not a uh, part of the gov uh, PTA government. Mm -hmm. This is happening for the last 73 years. Okay. We are not focusing on the skill development. We are just focusing on just to uh, teach them some uh, Urdu or some English or some other books. And we have made the criteria if somebody speaks English good, he is an excellent guy. Mm -hmm. Or he is a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. We have to train the people. Skill are the prime. Right. From the very beginning, language is also a skill. No? Uh, language skill, but uh, language skill, but for what? Either you are going to uh, produce everybody interpreter, or you just want to create everybody is talking, giving the good speeches? No. Call centers. <laughs> Call centers. It is a very service important. industry. We are talking about skill development. Okay. Comprehensive, starting from there to teach them to do the work. The first thing we can teach them the children at the school level. Yeah. We should inculcate the this habit to do work with your own hand. Mm -hmm. Because that is very fundamental thing. Our children, especially in the cities they are living, they are used to the maids and these everybody drivers, they are working for them. Right. That we have to teach them. They have to learn because when they come Do to Do you have any uh, statistical um, uh, you know, data to tell me how many of, of Pakistanis have access to maids in their houses? No. It is not only in the, on the cities. If you look at that at the ground level, either we are uh, telling the t uh, students or the t uh, kids to work with your own hand, no, okay. at the school level. We're mm -hmm. not telling them. Mm -hmm. Everybody is running to the private school right now. What okay. is happening now? Right. This attitude, when we come to the, uh, at the higher level, even mm -hmm. our engineers know they are looking for the white collar job. Although the degree is basically a blue collar job, even our agriculture graduates from the University of Agriculture from all over the Pakistan, you tell me how many of those graduates are going to the agriculture? Mm -hmm. They are looking for the uh, uh, white collar job. This attitude, to learn to work is very fundamental thing if we want to skill the develop, right. uh, develop the skills right. and we want to bring those people in the field. If you look at the statistics of, uh, I was just talking to the Vice Chancellor of Faisalabad Agricultural University, mm -hmm. I was asking him, is there any data so we can um, calculate how many students from the agriculture field, from agronomy, from entomology, from their right. sectors, they are working in agriculture. Mm -hmm. We don't have data. Okay. If you find in Islamabad, I know hundreds of the people who are agronomists, but they are working in the NGOs as a white collar job. Uh, that's a very good point. And uh, one uh, particular aspect about uh, t uh, training the trainers, uh, that actually resonates with everybody. Uh, we have seen during the COVID-19, everything was shut down, the schools were. And you, have to, uh, you had to actually go online uh, for education. And nobody among the teachers had uh, that kind of capacity to actually communicate to the students. And that became a problem. How much will the government need to focus on this aspect from schools uh, to vocational training to higher education? Look, there is a, we have to put all our horses toward that. Mm -hmm. Because if we are able to provide the quality education, right. we will create the quality human capital. Mm -hmm. That is a prerequisite for any economy. Mm -hmm. One thing and second thing, we have the opportunity. Right now, the Chinese government have given us 1.16 billion US dollar mm -hmm. for the skill development in Pakistan. Okay. Okay. So we have the money. Always we say we don't have the money because due to the debt crisis in the Pakistan. You yeah. know, last year we have taken a 14.3 billion dollar. Where is this money actually going to? TEFTA or elsewhere? TEFTA. Okay. TEFTA and other uh, other uh, uh, training institutions of, training institution. institution of yeah. Pakistan. Yeah. And we have that huge money if okay. we plan well. Mm -hmm. and we correlate it to the Kamja program, mm -hmm. we can do the miracles. If they are doing the likes in silos, like a SARS program is different program, mm -hmm. Kamja program is different program, okay. and this skill development is different. If they can create a link as a coordination, we can do miracle with this, in, uh, in especially right. for the skill development through the vocational training. I'm not talking about education, skill development, because right. this is money is for the skill development. So we can do it. Yeah. One thing. And, and, uh, the I have to actually move on. I have to go to the other guest as well. Sure. Uh, Dr. Saab, uh, let me come back to, the, uh, to you and let me ask you about the education in your sector as well. Uh, uh, there is this uh, perception in Pakistan that ac academic uh, standards uh, across board are declining. Do you actually um, uh, agree with that or you are going to actually find an exception to this rule in your sector? 
Um, I don't think so. And I think um, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, what we were studying uh, many years back, uh, our children are now studying much more uh, than that at the same level. So I don't say that um, education standards are going down, but one thing is certainly has changed. Uh, when I was in school and college, uh, going to a private school or college meant, uh, with some exceptions, that you couldn't made it to a government school or the government college because these were considered top of the line or you know only who couldn't get into those schools uh, could go to, used to go to the private colleges or private school right. and i think the reason uh, major reason i could find out was that when uh, you know our class fellows were sons and daughters uh, of uh, you know the political leadership uh, the judiciary the arms uh, armed forces everyone was sending their kid to the same government school and everyone had a stake to make sure that this school has the resources it required and that resulted in the you know the, a good government uh, school systems and good a good government college system and remember right. these private schools uh, is a very new phenomena and just right. linking Dr. it with Sir, the COVID I, i'm just interjecting very quickly uh, just uh, so that you can recollect this as well. When you used to go to a public school, uh, what was the strength of a class? Sir? How many children used to be in a class? Because at this moment, because of population growth, it seems to be uh, imploding, the classes are. Please, uh, can you tell us about that also? You know, I was going to government uh, public schools, uh, which were considered at that time uh, top of the line. Uh, so our class uh, was around 30 plus minus uh, students uh, in different classes. Um, right. And uh, the, the now issue 150 of uh, to population explosion. Yes, and the population explosion is a major factor, which will, I think, is affecting not only the, the health sector, but also the education sector and your all right. the poverty index and all things. So this is like one root, another root cause uh, which we need to address. And I, I raised this to one government minister and I said, uh, no matter how you open, you know, 10 new hospitals, uh, if the population number is increasing and even the diseases are not increasing, you cannot provide beds uh, to the people who need that if we didn't control the influx of the numbers. And all similarly, right. if we keep spending on uh, curative care, and do did not and do not support our preventive care and invest right. on it then no you know no country can uh, afford to provide health care and the biggest example is us which spends okay. highest per capita on health care but because its uh, majority is curative it's in the health indicators it comes much lower even to the cuba which is the poorest country and actually has much higher health indicators because right. their focus is on preventing Dr. care. Sir, uh, before did, I come know, back to the studio, very quickly, uh, let me ask you another thing. You're a doctor. Uh, to me, you actually can reflect on most of, the, uh, the, most of these policies. What is wrong with our population control policy? Uh, and I'm not merely talking about the current government. I'm talking about the governments over time. Very quickly, sir. Dr. Sab, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, I thought you were asking it to the study. Uh, no, no. I think the problem is that uh, uh, we are not taking it seriously. We, we do not uh, realize what a major, uh, you know, explosive problem that is. And still, because for the political reasons, uh, no government, uh, and I'm not saying one government, uh, no government in successive years has been able to, you know, take it up front and say this is our problem and we have to deal with it and you know you deal that, with it that's a very uh, very good answer context, sir. but deal with it that's a very good answer uh, let me come back to uh, senator sir i'm told that we are actually running out of time as well but i have uh, actually i'm going to include two questions here very quickly one population uh, to uh, according to our research uh, in every district there is shortage of um, uh, you know um, uh, population control or population policy uh, officials, there's a shortfall of 50%. And then you can talk about macro uh, indicators as well. Very quickly, you're going to conclude, actually. Uh, you know, the population has been part of problem for Pakistan for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, what we try to do is because after the 18th Amendment, major majority of the issues lies with the provincial governments. Mm. We being in Punjab, I was like, f focusing and I spoke to Dr. Yasmin uh, last week on the population thing. She was very much focused on it and government is uh, working on it. There are two things we're working on. Number one is the policy. 
Mm. And number two is the, 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 the main things, you know, the pills and everything which were supposed to have in those things. Yeah. Uh, yes, there has been a major uh, lack of uh, infrastructure in the, in, in the issues that we have. We're not much having money in that uh, field. Yeah. Because uh, this year... Despite health, it uh, being devolved to the provinces? Yes, this, because we were focusing on the health cards right now. We mm. wanted to have prepared a bit of money on that sector and we wanted to develop the health sector both at the same time. Are you so going to have a population card as well? No, we won't. We'll have a Kisan card, inshallah, okay. but in the health card. But the thing is, this is something which is needs to be discussed with the Punjab government and uh, federal government is not really focused on that one. So yeah. I have uh, least yeah, of the but, um, issues but the, on this uh, the federal government will have to uh, push at least the parties. Yeah. Uh, yeah. governments which are uh, within your party's reach, yes. right? Dr. Yasmin, when I spoke to last, she said she we are focused on it and you'll see a change is coming up soon in the health sector. Let this us. one, yes, economic terms, which you lost in, uh, I just want to include. It's good. We need to know that Pakistan has had a $300 billion economy right now, oh. which is one of uh, probably at 46 in the world. I'm sure Ramis have made agreed to it. We have the highest he reserves. He might not, but uh, we not. don't have the time we for it. We have the highest right reserves right ever in the history, standing at $24 billion. We I just want to say one yeah, thing. $2.5 billion worth of... Only one thing. Yeah, uh, right now, I'm just so told things are going that the time right has run out. But uh, you yeah, want to yeah, say yeah. very quickly, sir. Government should not go for the privatization. That will be a key for the success. Of uh, you cannot drop such a bomb at the very end of the program. <laughs> and you cannot ask. You kept your data. Uh, but you know, that is a solution for them. Okay, uh, but that is uh, a, debatable, a debatable issue. At this moment, I'm told that we have run out of time. Uh, Shagil Ramay sahab, thank you very much sir, for your precious time. Uh, on a bus, Bappi sahab, thank you very much sir, for your precious time as well. Dr. Rana Jawad Asghar sahab, always great having you in the show as well. Viewers, this was today's uh, discussion. Uh, our coverage will continue, but uh, uh, for me and my panel, this actually brings us to the conclusion of transmission. Take care.